Hi, we want to welcome you to this online service on the last Sunday of the year. What a year 2020 has presented to us. And it has been <laughs> wildly exceeding all of our expectations in terms of um, that ancient saying of, may you live in interesting times. We have certainly had a challenging year in many ways. And I appreciate personally your patience with our schedule changing from time to time with respect to in-person gatherings versus online worship together. And I wanted to explain just a little bit about that and how we chose for this week and the next week to have online service rather than an in-person gathering. As many of you know, in the Memphis metro area and indeed all across our state, we are in quite a critical phase with respect to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, locally, we have been doing a little bit better than some of our counties in Tennessee, but Tennessee as a state uh, has been over the last two to three weeks ranked number one or number two um, in the uh, percentages of the growth of the, the pandemic and how it's been affecting our citizens. With that in mind, Governor Lee held a call this last week with many of our religious leaders around the state, and that did include our United Pentecostal Church District Superintendent uh, Reverend Ron Brown. And in that call, Governor Lee asked religious leaders to consider over the next uh, just short period of time to consider having online services rather than in-person gatherings. He actually prayed uh, for us that we would have uh, wise choices that in terms of protecting uh, both our congregants and the broader community with respect to limiting gatherings. Now, I want to be very clear that um, I do believe that church meetings are essential and not only online meetings such as this, but in-person gatherings. And we have demonstrated that this week through the pandemic, we were able to have by God's blessings, uh, 27 straight weeks of in-person gatherings. Um, and then in November, we had to take a few weeks out um, because of uh, the, the COVID virus affecting some of our, our, of our member families. Um, over this last uh, couple of weeks though, in the last two weeks of the year, we want to honor the governor's request uh, and to meet online. I don't view this as government overreach, but I view this as a government overture uh, to us to ask for help. And so we want to, to give that help during this time of year. So with that said, we're looking forward to a great day today. I'm gonna give a, a little bit different message today. It'll be more uh, in a conversational format rather than um, some of the, the decibels maybe that you guys are accustomed to me uh, getting to when I'm standing up and, and uh, trying to communicate my passion for the Word of God. But as I studied and meditated and prayed over the message that we're going to bring today, I uh, was so excited and so moved by the Word of God and its wisdom uh, and how the Word of God is so eternal. It, it just ministers to each period of time because it stands outside of time as the wisdom of all eternity given to us. And I think you're gonna to see today that, that it really speaks to our time and, and, and our moment. So we're gonna be getting to that in, in just, just a few minutes. But I do wanna remind you of a couple of things. Um, first of all, in review, I do want to give honor to you as an AU congregation for last week's sacrificial special offering for what we call Christmas for Christ. And that offering is designated specifically to go to um, church planter ministries. And also we had designated a portion of those funds uh, from last week's offering to go also um, to a children's home in Tupelo, Mississippi. It's known as the Tupelo Children's Mansion. And I just wanna give praise to God for your sacrificial giving. Um, we wanted to support uh, the national work of, of North American church planters by giving a, an offering that we don't designate, we just give it to the general fund for church planters. We also wanted to bless uh, Brother Bowman, who's going to be uh, planting a church in Boston. And my goal, frankly, guys, was to, to be able to, to sponsor him at the lowest level, $25 a month uh, for a year. That was my personal goal that I hoped would come out of the offering. But you guys gave over and above um, what any, uh, I guess human expectation would be. And because of that, we were able to double that and we're gonna be able to, to sponsor uh, the Bowman family this next year um, with, with several hundred dollars of support. Uh, we're also gonna be able to give several hundred dollars to the National 
uh, general fund for church planters, and we're also going to be able uh, to give uh, substantially to the, the Chupalo Children's Mansion Fund as well. And I wanna thank you guys for that. I know that God is going to reward you, but I wanna tell you personally that it just ministers to me to know that we're working among people who love God and who want to give sacrificially uh, to the cause of his kingdom. And James, in his letter uh, to Christians in the first century, said that to take care of the fatherless is part of true religion. And I'm so thankful that we can uh, say today that we're not only helping to spread the gospel, but we're helping to enact the gospel by ministering to those um, who are needy today. I want to remind you that we've put up a couple of new podcasts that are available to you. Um, this year, we've had almost 400 uh, downloads and, and plays of messages from our church through the podcast ministry at Anchor FM. And I want to thank each of you guys, not only for listening, but for sharing that content with those that can be blessed by the word of the gospel. You know, this theme this year, such as I have, is involved in getting the gospel message outside of our in-person gatherings and getting it to the entire community. And I want to thank you for being a part of that by sharing those podcasts. I want to encourage you to continue to do that this week. Not only listen yourself and remind you uh, yourself of the Word of God and take it in again and meditate on it, but share that with someone that may be blessed by it because you never know what could happen when the Word of God penetrates a heart through a person's earbuds or while they're driving down the road. God can deal with someone and bless them just as He's blessed us with His Word. Two dates to remember, uh, January 7th, the first Thursday of the new year, January 7th at 7 o'clock, we're going to begin again our Edify series. Um, that's our digital, uh, our online expository exploration of books of the Bible where we're going verse by verse and going through and discussing that together. And our book, I'm very excited uh, to start the new year. It, our, our book is going to be Colossians. You're going to love it. It's going to be fantastic. And we're going to gain a lot from the Word of God together. So Thursday night, 7 o'clock on the 7th, very first Thursday of the new year. Please join us uh, for a digital Bible study and invite any guests that would benefit from that discussion of God's Word uh, together. January the 17th is going to be another special day for Arlington United. We're going to be blessed by the ministry of Brother Tom Trimble from St. Charles, Missouri, lifetime friend of mine, uh, a friend to this church, uh, a, a contributor financially, spiritually, emotionally, and, and, and with logistic support to this church. And he's going to be with us, uh, and he's going to be speaking for us in our afternoon service on January the 17th. So you'll want to um, invite any friends and family to that service. We're looking forward to that uh, a great deal. So January the 7th, our first Edify session of the year. January 10th, our first in-person meeting of the year uh, will be planned for that Sunday. And then January 17th, we'll have Reverend Tom Trimble with us for a special weekend of uh, forward momentum spiritually, and you're going to gain uh, a great deal from that time together. Before we enter into our worship time today, why don't we pause and let's pray and thank God for what he's going to do even today as we um, digitally participate in this worship session uh, together and also as we lift up and glorify the name of Jesus and we receive his word. His spirit is going to bless us today and I know that even if you're watching on your phone, your computer, if you're listening on the podcast, God is going to bless you. And so let's, let's pause right now and ask him to do that. Lord, I ask you right now to bless every person who is listening by podcast, every person who is watching uh, through YouTube today, whether it be by phone or computer or the TV at home. However, God, that we're all gathering together, you are in the midst of us because you promised that you do that and you promised, God, that you inhabit our praises. And so we're going to lift you up today. We're going to lift up hands. We're going to lift up hearts. We're going to lift our minds and our eyes to you because you are the creator of the universe. We love and adore you, Father. We're thankful for your presence in us and we ask you to have your way today. In the name, the mighty, matchless, adorable name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Amen. God bless you as we worship with Sister Kate.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Continue to worship, let God's presence move here this morning, in Jesus' name.
this moment pass without it being personal to you. good to be in the presence of the Lord, doesn't it? To lift up his name, and I appreciate Jana leading us into the presence of God through playing and singing and helping us to exalt the name of Jesus. We've said it before around here, let's say it again. The higher we lift up Jesus, the more we recognize that he is above our problems, and his greatness is greater than any circumstance that we face. I'm going to turn from the Word of God today and just read uh, uh, three scriptures from Genesis chapter 2 verses 1 through 3. The heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended the work he had done. He rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all the work which God had created and made. I'll talk to you for just a moment. Um, and, and hopefully it will be a little more conversational style. Uh, than maybe we're accustomed to. At least the decibel level is going to be a little lower today. <laughs> That's my intent. Uh, about the pause that refreshes. The pause that refreshes. My wife loves Coca-Cola. Uh, if you know Jana, you know that uh, a large Coke is one of her favorite things in life. And uh, one of the slogans that Coca-Cola Company made famous was, they said it's the pause that refreshes. And they would show images of people taking a Coke and just taking a break from the business of life. And I think that's maybe, um, other than the taste and the carbonation, uh, I think that's one of the reasons that, that Jana really likes Coca-Cola. Um, the Lord knows, as a mother of twins and a wife to me, uh, there's a lot going on at our house. And, um, you know, to be able to take just a few moments um, and, and take a moment and just, just be still for a second and enjoy that beverage is, is something that my wife um, really appreciates. And it just is a simple reminder that for all of us, pausing and stopping the business of life is important. It goes all the way back to the second chapter in the Bible, this concept of being able to pause and to rest. Now, God, we know he doesn't get weary. So when the Bible says that he rested, this is very similar to me, the concept of when Jesus was baptized. Jesus had no sins to be remitted, and yet he submitted to baptism uh, by John. And the Bible says that this was to fulfill all righteousness or to be an example uh, for us. And so I think that when we go back to the concept of God resting on the seventh day that we find in Genesis 2, 
This idea of God pausing to refresh himself is really an example to us in terms of how we need um, to conduct our lives. And in the Mosaic law that the children of Israel uh, received in Exodus uh, chapter 20, we also find that the Sabbath made its way to the Big Ten. Uh, it is actually the, the third commandment in the Ten Commandments that were given uh, to Israel to, to obey. And they were told to, to have this pause as well. And I want to tell you, friends, that actually, although um, it's the third commandment, I, I think probably the Sabbath is the second most broken commandment um, because I think that we just don't give ourselves uh, enough time to rest. And in terms of Sabbath today, what I'm talking about is not even necessarily attendance in a worship congregation, but stopping and pausing actually to allow God to refresh us in our lives. I think the most frequently broken of the Ten Commandments is actually the first, thou shall have no other gods before me. And I think that, you know, the reason we break the Sabbath so often may be tied to the fact that we break the first commandment so often. When we don't put God first, then of necessity, we begin to put ourselves last. We begin to put our health last. We begin to put our families last. We begin to put the important things in life last because when we don't put him first, then that God-shaped hole in our hearts and our spirits that's meant to, to cause us to long for him and to, to want his presence, we try to fill that with all kinds of things, achievement, money, power, fame, um, certain experiences in life. And you know what? None of those things fulfill us. And so we wind up scurrying around like hamsters on a wheel, doing all kinds of things and, and putting ourselves in all kinds of situations, but we don't find the rest and the refreshing that God actually intended for us from the beginning. One of the themes that we often discuss in our time together with the Spirit of God and the Word of God is that if we just allow ourselves to sort of float down the current of culture, we're not going to wind up in a righteous place that God desires for us to wind up in. This concept of Sabbath and the pause it refreshes is another example of that. You know, our culture is not wired for rest. Our culture is not wired to take time to take stock or to take time to, to, to have a moment of reflection and refreshing. Our culture is wired for increasing productivity. In research for this particular time together today in this message, I actually looked at work productivity over the last 40 years in the United States. Work productivity has gone up by 70%. Now work pay has only gone up by about 11%. So if you're wondering if you're working harder for less, over the last 40 years, uh, the trends are showing that, that we are working harder. And the electronic uh, invasion of our lives through emails and smartphones and texts continues. There are literally every day um, around the world, there are about, oh, 294 billion emails that are sent and received. Um, each American every day um, has about 80 texts that are given and received. And so if you look at it, it's about somewhere around um, 80 text messages, about 40 emails per person per day. And uh, by the time you add all that up, it's, it's an interruption from your life about every six minutes. And so no wonder, <laughs> no wonder that we find difficulty in obeying Psalms 46 and 10, which says, be still and know that I am God. I want to tell you, friends, today, if we don't make a purposeful intent of having a pause in our lives and resting from our labor, resting from our attempts to provide for ourselves, if you will, then it's not going to happen because our culture doesn't really allow it. Um, the infinite scroll up and down your phone or your smartphone tablet or your, your computer, uh, you know, clicking on this and clicking on that, it's designed to keep your attention. In the attention economy, outrage and everything else that, that goes on is designed to keep you glued to the screen and, and actually not pausing to, to spend enough time in reflecting over the things that really matter. One of the reasons that I love this time of year between Christmas and New Year's is the weather is usually kind of uh, uh, wants you to, it kind of makes you want to be indoors. The, the time of year, the, the hustle and bustle of Christmas is over, but the, the challenges of the new year haven't yet begun. And so we often wind up sort of uh, being reflective in this time. And for me, 
Uh, I find it's valuable. You know, in Psalm 90 and 12, Moses encouraged us through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to teach us. He, he, he said, Lord, we, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. And Moses encouraged us through the, through the Holy Spirit to apply our hearts to wisdom by being taught to number our days. And so this concept of marking time and reflecting is indeed a biblical concept. And at this time of the year, I'm reminded of the three reasons which Sabbath blesses my life personally. And, and number one, that, that is reflection. It's reflection. It's looking back. And <laughs> when we look back on this year, corporately as a church, there have been some, there have been some highlights. There have been some wonderful things that have happened. I, I remember uh, baptizing Brother Willie. I remember baptizing uh, from the, 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 uh, the, the Bonyos family three wonderful people in January in the name of Jesus. I, I remember people who've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and we've had three of those experiences this year. I remember God dealing with people and, and, and remitting sins and, and, and doing wonderful things in our lives, encouraging us. And then I also remember some challenges that we had. You know, we, we thought we had secured a new place to meet, and, and uh, that didn't work out because of some regulations that the, the city interpreted for us. And uh, there were times of, of personal challenges in many of our families. We, we, we had our first funeral this this year in our congregation with Sister Sandy. And so when we look back on the, the highs and lows of this year, you know, who expected that we'd be doing this? Um, you know, television church, if you will. I'm certainly not cut out to be a televangelist. And all of the plans that we had back in January when we had a leadership meeting and we thought, this is what we're going to do this year and this is how things are going to go, many of those were interrupted. But as I reflect, I'm, I'm prone to see that that God, in his sovereignty, he, he has been our source and he's been our provider. He, he, he's been greater than any circumstance. And that's one of the values of reflection. It, it keeps us from being that, that hamster on a wheel and turns us into a person, an ambassador of Christ in the kingdom of God and realizing that he is with us. He's guiding us and directing us. Sabbath causes us to reflect. Number two, Sabbath causes us to reorient. So not only do we reflect on the past, but we reorient for the present and the future. And we say, God, how do you want me to spend my life? How do you want me to spend this upcoming year? How do you want me to spend this day? How do you want me to spend this week? With my family, with your kingdom, with your people, with those around me who need your message of help and hope and healing. How, God, can I share that? That's what Sabbath teaches us to do is to reorient. Because guys, this word, is not the guide of this world. And if we just allow this world to set our agenda and to set our compass, then we're gonna wind up far adrift to the principles of the word of God that he wants to instill in us. The spirit of this age is not the spirit of Christ. And so if we're going to be consistent to what God wants us to be and, 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 and what he wants us to do, then we're gonna to have to reorient. And I would encourage us to do that on a regular basis. And that's one of the blessings and the sanctification of Sabbath. So we reflect on where we've been. We reorient with where we are. And finally, we refresh. The Bible says in Isaiah 28 that he intended refreshing for his people, but they refused it. The, 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 the people of covenant of the Old Testament, they just kept wandering around. They just kept working. They just kept doing all these things, and they refused to be refreshed. But Jesus gave that call again. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, he said, if you're labored down, if you're heavy laden, if life really has you, and this is my West Tennessee vernacular here, if, if life really has you down, beaten down, Jesus said, come to me, take rest. I want to give you rest. Come unto me, and, and, and my yoke is easy. Satan's yoke is burdensome, but Christ's yoke is light because he puts his strength into doing his work through us. You know, guys, we really... We don't work for God. God works in and through us. And that's the difference. Paul said in Galatians chapter 6, don't be weary in well-doing. If you're doing well, super. But if you're weary all the time in doing it, I would challenge you to think, am I really doing it right? God's way is a way of rest. God's way is a way of refreshing. In Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, he talked about that rest and the refreshing and 
in verse 9, he encouraged us to go ahead and enter into the rest of Christ through the Holy Spirit. We are allowed to enter into the Holy of Holies, and we're allowed to be refreshed in the presence of God. Reflection, reorientation, and refreshing. Those are the three blessings and benefits of Sabbath that are available to us every week. They're available every year. They're available every day. They're really available every moment if we'll take it upon ourselves to, to avail ourselves of that opportunity in Christ. But if we're going to have to be intentional, as I told you, the culture is not oriented toward rest. The culture is oriented toward grinding our lives and grinding every moment in mindless entertainment or in meaningless pursuits or in high productivity without much meaning and value. Remember, you're not just a cog in a wheel. You're not an instrument of work in a capitalistic machine. You're not uh, some consumer that's just there to drive the economy or to uh, try to, to have certain experiences that, that cause you to have a fleeting moment of happiness. No, you are a soul created to live forever in the presence of God or outside his presence. And I beg you today to take the opportunity of Sabbath to reflect and say, I want to be in the presence of God. To take the opportunity of Sabbath and reorient and say, if God made me, he owns me. And so how should I then live toward his glory? And finally, take that moment of Sabbath, not only to reflect and reorient, but to refresh and say, God, I don't want to live my life just burdened down. I don't want to live my life rushing from moment to another. I, I want to pause and allow you to refresh me through your Holy Spirit. Lord, come inside of me and, and fill me with your presence. Fill me to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Give me that experience they had in Acts chapter 2. And then, Lord, once I've had that, allow me to continue through that experience to, to access your power and your providence in order that I'm not the one who's driving my life, but, but you're driving my life. You know, Sabbath ultimately is a statement of faith. It's a statement that says God is sovereign and he's my source. God is my provider, not my productivity. God is my Jehovah Jireh and not my job. God is the one who is my compass, not the culture around me. That's what Sabbath says. Let's be intentional about it. I love what Claudette Walker, the great Christian teacher said. She said, learn to love silence. How can you and I access Sabbath, this rest of God this week? Well, number one, let's find a way to be in the presence of God daily. Pause, turn off your phone, put the screen down, uh, get up five minutes earlier if you need to. After you take a shower, have that first cup of coffee or late at night before you go to bed, rather than just scrolling through Netflix and seeing what else is available to, to take our minds off the pressures of the day. How about we open our Bibles, open our hearts, close our eyes, raise our hands and say, God, fill me with your refreshing. I promise you, I promise you, he'll meet you there in that moment. Whether it's five hour prayer meeting, or five minutes or five seconds where you say, Lord, I want you. I want you. You'll find that his desire for you is greater than your desire for him, and he'll meet you there. Access the presence of God daily. Weekly, weekly, I'd encourage you to access the people of God, to, to fellowship with them and to, to worship together, even as we have today, even though it's by digital means. Connect with the people of God on a weekly basis. The corporate body of Christ is is a place where his spirit is made manifest in such a way that it allows us to experience his presence in a way that, that is unique and is refreshing to us. And that is a wonderful way of being refreshed through the presence of the Lord as it is made manifest among his people. And then finally, daily presence of God, weekly presence of God's people. And then I'd say on a on a, on a basis of, of maybe once a quarter, you know, at least every few months, try to get a little change of scenery. And that doesn't mean you got to spend a whole lot of money on vacation or something, but spend some time with, with, with family on, 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 a, on a weekly basis and, and, and spend some time with them. But then if you can get your family or a good friend and, and, and get out of town, you know, even going to a state park or 
take and you know go to a restaurant somewhere that's uh, that you don't ordinarily go to and just take some time and and be thankful for the blessings of God enjoy them maybe go on a hike or a bike ride or do something that allows you to get away from the hustle and bustle of the digital world and the world of commercial productivity and experience something of the nature and wonder that God has created for us whether that's um, a hillside that you see or a sunset whether it's a barbecue sandwich that you taste or as Jana likes it a long cold drink of coca-cola take the pause that reflects not just in material experiences but in spiritual renewal through Christ and the refreshing that he offers we don't have to be busy all the time we don't have to worry about more and more and more and more productivity we can turn it off and we can say, Lord, I'm going to rely on you. I'm going to allow you and your Sabbath to help me reflect. I'm going to allow you to help me reorient. And God, I'm going to allow you to refresh me because my confidence is not in what I can do, but it's in what you can do through me. And because of that, I can afford to rest in you because your work is already completed and you're going to complete it in me. That's the faith and the hope and the confidence of the Christian. Let's receive that today and let's share that with everyone that we meet because every person created by God is designed to enter into his rest. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed this online service today as much as I enjoyed participating in it, and I hope that you were challenged as much as I was by the Word of God, which he gives to remind us that the Sabbath teaches us that God is sovereign, he is our source, and he's going to sustain us through all the challenges and the turmoils of life. It's my prayer this week that we will not only receive that message ourselves, but we'll share that message with someone else. Remember, our theme this year is such as I have, and we want to get this message of the gospel beyond ourselves and share it with someone else. Is there somebody that you could call this week, somebody you could text, somebody you could say a kind word to, somebody you could pray for, somebody that you can engage with, a fellow Christian you can encourage, or someone who needs to know this gospel message of rest and refreshing that we find in the Holy Spirit today by the covenant that we enter into through Jesus Christ's sacrifice. God in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Isn't it exciting to think that we don't have to be enough. We can, we can know that God is enough for us through Christ and his spirit is empowering us to be the church in our world today. Take the pause that refreshes and may God bless you as we do his work and we enter into his rest. This I hope week. you enjoyed this online service today as much as I enjoyed participating in it. And I hope that you were challenged as much as I was by the word of God, which he gives to remind us that the Sabbath teaches us that God is sovereign, he is our source, and he's going to sustain us through all the challenges and the turmoils of life. It's my prayer this week that we will not only receive that message ourselves, but we'll share that message with someone else. Remember, our theme this year is such as I have, and we want to get this message of the gospel beyond ourselves and share it with someone else. Is there somebody that you could call this week, somebody you could text, somebody you could say a kind word to, somebody you could pray for, somebody that you can engage with, a fellow Christian you can encourage, or someone who needs to know this gospel message of rest and refreshing that we find in the Holy Spirit today by the covenant that we enter into through Jesus Christ's sacrifice. God in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Isn't it exciting to think that we don't have to be enough? We can, we can know that God is enough for us through Christ and his spirit is empowering us to be the church in our world today. Take the pause that refreshes and may God bless you as we do his work and we enter into his rest this week.